Well, good morning. I've got a feeling we may have a problem with the uh, Facebook live stream here this morning. So uh, obviously I'm going to have to uh, download it from YouTube, put it on Facebook in a, in a while. Meanwhile, I'm here at one of my favourite um, historical engineering features in the northwest of England. This is the embankment that runs across the Brun Lee Valley on the uh, Liverpool Leeds Canal. And of course the Brun Lee Valley uh, over time got changed to Burnley or of course if you're uh, local then it's a Burnley. So here I am in Burnley um, in the middle of this uh, one mile long absolutely dead straight embankment that runs across this valley and either side of uh, this embankment are the two tunnels on this canal. Each of these tunnels uh, one mile long as it brings the Liverpool Leeds Canal uh, over the, uh, the Pennines and of course this is from an era when the country was powered by its natural elements i.e. wind and uh, water and uh, then subsequently of course the Industrial Revolution kicked in and uh, we saw the start of the hydrocarbon driven economy and of course that's what we've been locked into very much for about 120 years now and certainly since the advent of the uh, Federal Reserve in 1913 and uh, then a uh, hydrocarbon driven economy uh, forced through by the international banking community and if you ever wondered why you're uh, paying such a high price for hydrocarbons then look no further than the fact that your governments consider it the easiest way to fleece people of their income uh, through high taxation. Well nonetheless uh, obviously I'm here for the fracking update or anti-fracking update and this weekend has absolutely been one of celebration after last uh, Thursday a most memorable day where unanimous victories for the anti-fracking community where a, a literally unanimous vote by both uh, Cheshire County Council uh, against the application by IGAS to uh, drill an ex uh, to um, test their exploratory well at uh, Ellesmere Port and then uh, Rotherham Metropolitan uh, Borough Council uh, voting again unanimously to uh, resist INEOS's application to um, frack within their boundaries. And uh, then of course uh, in the evening Greg Clark announces that he has uh, instructed the Oil and Gas Authority, which of course uh, is Greg Clark because he's the sole shareholder of this private limited company, but he's instructed the Oil and Gas Authority to do a full analysis of uh, Third Energy's uh, financial accounts and uh, their financial health. And uh, you know he's calling on other departments within the government to analyse this. And my sense is that Greg, you slept very, very well over the weekend, knowing that at long last you had done the right thing. You know, it was staring you in the face, and of course it still is, but we completely understand that it is essential that you have the substance behind your ultimate decision, which can only be to reject Barclays Bank, trading as Third Energy, their application to frack at Kirby Misperton. Because, uh, you know, they're already uh, what, more than um, four months late in submitting their accounts from 2016 which they had the audacity to state last week that they were in the final stages of preparation. Now, this in of itself shows massive incompetence because this company does not have multiple income streams. It's very, very simple. It has an income stream from the uh, money that it gets for keeping the Napton power station on the Black Watch. And of course it gets a little bit more money when it actually has to kick in to add power into the grid. That's their primary income stream. Their outgoings are the 18 people that they have on the payroll and plus their operating expenses, which of course over the past uh, 12 months have not been insignificant because they have been pushing to frack the well at Kirby Mispleton. And certainly since early November, they've been incurring costs of, at a conservative estimate, £100,000 a day just to keep this kit on the site there. 
So unless they're cutting deals with the suppliers not to invoice it just yet, so that they can keep the invoices off the books, which of course is effectively illegal, it's manipulation. And uh, by the way, Greg, if you need any help at all in getting some insight into how these companies hide expenses or falsify revenue for the short-term benefit of enhancing the perception of their financial health, then I am more than happy to provide that uh, input absolutely free of charge. And uh, you know, I'm not gonna ask you to, to uh, hold on to it, but I can give you the in-depth insight to the way in which these companies manipulate their finances. And of course, this is exactly what they're gonna be doing here. Now, one would hope that within the treasury, there are people that have the capacity and capability for a, an absolute forensic analysis of their accounts. Not least the 2016 accounts, which still haven't been published, but their operating accounts through 2017. Because once again, what this will show is that this company is effectively trading insolvently. The only reason it's not actually insolvent is because every now and again, they go to another arm of Barclays Bank and uh, they blag a few more noughts on the screen to hide the fact that, uh, you know, basically this is a donkey and nobody in their right mind would invest in this company. But of course, Jim Ratcliffe would appear not to be in his right mind. So, uh, you know, don't be too surprised if any of you step in and uh, buy up uh, Third Energy for, you know, literally a, a pound, a token one pound, for uh, taking responsibility for its debts. And of course, as INEOS already uh, sitting on a massive debt pile, uh, which is backed up by, of course, the uh, assets that they have around the globe, then of course for INEOS, this is mere chump change out of their debt. So, Greg, we really appreciate you kicking the can down the road here and looking for the substance to be able to substantiate your ultimate decision, which can only be to pull the plug on uh, Third Energy here. And uh, of course, if INEOS do pick up uh, Third Energy, then you know we're gonna challenge whether or not they can literally just pick it up and run with it where it's at, or whether they have to go through the whole process again. Because let's of course understand that Third Energy is already under different management than it has been for the past uh, uh, seven years nearly, since um, last uh, week when uh, John Dewar fell on his sword and uh, although claiming he was gonna retire anyway, but has finally seen the writing on the wall and it's hasta la vista, mother fracker. Well, let's uh, see what transpires. But today, meanwhile, down in uh, Derbyshire, Derbyshire County Council are going to be considering Ineos's mirror or twin, however you want to look it, application to drill and frack at uh, Marsh Lane. Now, last year, uh, Ineos had submitted an application to Derbyshire County Council, but then they decided that Derbyshire County Council was being somewhat tardy in dealing with the application. So they said, you know what? We're done with you. We're gonna go uh, straight to central government and we're going to appeal to the planning inspector to uh, make the decision for you, basically. But meanwhile, not satisfied with that, they decided to submit a twin, pretty much identical, bar a few words, application to Derbyshire County Council. And of course, this is, um, this is something that uh, you know, is legitimate, uh, but Derbyshire County Council, being the smart guys they are, have realized that it is simply a repeat of the application that was submitted and then withdrawn because they've gone straight to the planning inspector. So Derbyshire County Council now have to decide what to do with that uh, second application. Well, of course, there is only one thing that they can do, and that is basically say, frack off, because it's very clear uh, yet another INEOS attempt to manipulate the system. And of course, as we are seeing so clearly, Jim Ratcliffe and his henchmen at INEOS have zero respect for due process. They have zero respect for local communities, zero respect for the ecology of this country. All they're interested in is drawing their salary check 
and uh, enhancing the already obscene personal wealth of the owner of Ineos, Jim Ratcliffe. So, you know, let's see how today unfolds, but um, it surely, surely will only be a shock if Derbyshire County Council decide that they are going to pursue this application. But there again, even that, even that may then um, actually flare up in Ineos's faces because let's assume they do decide to pursue that application and they go through all the due process and then subsequently decide that it should be rejected. So then the planning inspector will no doubt have to consider two potential appeals. So, you know, this is a dirty, dirty game by a dirty, dirty industry. And the good news, of course, is that more and more people right across the country, and as we saw last week with the unanimous decisions in Chester and um, in Rotherham, more and more people are beginning to realise that this is a total con and with zero benefits to the targeted communities. And of course, let's not forget, and it's really important we don't forget, that radioactive waste management are about to launch their second attempt to find a mug punter community that will take their £40 million bribe to be considered as the location for the repository for the deep geological disposal facility of toxic nuclear waste. Now they know fine well that that's not going to happen. They're not going to find a community that is willing to do that. So what they're looking to create is this network of deep wells, some of which will be fracked, but some won't for varying reasons. And these then are potentially the target repositories for the disposal of toxic nuclear waste from the nuclear industry. So you know, the way in which we make sure that that's not, never going to be a possibility is of course to make sure that those wells are never drilled in the first place at all. So there really is all to play for. And um, you know, I'm not from this part of the world, the north of England, but I love this part of the world, both the northeast and the northwest. They are not the desolate north, as uh, described by uh, George Osborne's father-in-law, Lord Howell, uh, some five years ago now. These are beautiful, beautiful parts of the country. The Boland Shale takes its name from the uh, uh, forest of Boland, just a few miles to the northwest of here. A stunning area of truly outstanding natural beauty, just like the Yorkshire Dales, the Yorkshire, the North Yorkshire Moors, and the Wolds. And yet the government says, oh, no, we're going to turn it into a forest. Yeah, they're going to turn it into a forest to hide the wells and to potentially hide the uh, deep geological waste disposal wells that uh, manifest in amongst this nightmare. So anyone who still believes that their government has their best interests at heart, well, right now, the jury's out on Greg Clark because he does actually seem to be doing the right thing. But, uh, you know, let's, um, let's buy that time. Let's keep the pressure on from as many angles as we possibly can. And uh, not least, Greg, you know, your future political career, as you well know, rests on this, this decision. And it's no good you saying, well, I'm simply going to advise the Oil and Gas Authority because we know the Oil and Gas Authority is you. That's like me saying, well, I'm going to have uh, private words with Ian R. Crane. You know, what have you got, Greg? Voices in your head? I'm sure you've got a lot of them right now because you know precisely what it is that you need to be doing. And you have enormous support, regardless of what your party whip tells you, regardless of what the industry lobby tells you, regardless of what Lord John Brown quietly submits to you, you know, to try and uh, influence your decision. You have enormous support across the north of England. Just take a look at the Yorkshire Post. They ran a six page feature on fracking in Yorkshire last week. And I gather that's gonna continue through this week. So Greg, you're from this part of the world. Your origins are Teesside. You know what needs to be done. So have the cojones. Show yourself to have true political leadership and not succumb to the pressures from the corporate paymasters 
of the Tory party. So there we go, all to play for. Now um, tomorrow uh, there's a very good possibility that uh, Lou Hammond is going to be taking care of uh, tomorrow morning's 8.30 live stream and uh, hopefully she'll be uh, interviewing uh, at least one of the uh, local community who have been tremendous in their support since the establishment of the Misson Springs Protection Camp just uh, three weeks ago. So meanwhile, uh, do follow uh, Drill or Drop, outstanding news updates online from uh, Ruth Hayhurst. And uh, of course, please help by sharing these videos and uh, you know, let's get them outside of the anti-fragging community because ultimately this is going to be defeated not by any NGO, not by any individual, not by any individual group, but by multiple community groups all challenging this abomination in their own unique way. So thanks for joining me. And uh, if I don't catch you tomorrow, you'll be with Lou Hammond, but I will catch you later in the week. So have a great day. Hopefully it's a bit uh, drier where you are, but uh, it ain't snowing and the canal's not frozen. So it's gotta be good. Watch what happens in Derbyshire today. Take care.